Hey everyone, welcome back. I purchased a new mask uh, and I found some of these filters local at a big box store. Sometimes they make this packaging ridiculously hard to open for no good reason, right? Veni Veni Vici. Oh, ho, ho. it's like devil horns. Let's see how she breathes. So the astute amongst you will notice that this one has one cartridge and this one has two cartridges. So I made an adapter 3D printed uh, for single cartridge or double cartridge. Um, and both of those will be in Thingiverse. There will be a link uh, for this where I purchased this mask as well if you wish to have a fully replicatable mask. Uh, filters were 20 bucks I think for both because uh, that was a second set like of replacement filter cartridges and these I think were proper like 15 bucks at Menards. Um, part number wise you're looking at Honeywell's uh, 775 SCP 100L. Uh, those are P 100s and this P 95 uh, VOC which was N 75 001L. So whatever thread form that these take whatever that thread form is uh, you should uh, you should be able to use pretty much anything that Honeywell has uh, that has that thread form and uh, just screw it right on and adapt it to this mask. Uh, so whatever your requirements are. Uh, my requirements are that this allow me to breathe while grinding um, in the shop, uh, cutting in the shop, sanding in the shop, or fiddling in the shop, you know, like on the roof. I would like to take this moment to, t to address the uh, comments and concerns that people had, and, and they're quite valid uh, from the previous episode, and that was pointed out uh, that there are potentially microscopic holes all throughout this 3D print, uh, not just large uh, glaring gaps. Now I happen to get a large uh, glaring gap uh, here along this line layer shift that happened while this was 3D printing. So I painted this twice with automotive paint. Uh, I could feel air coming out of here when I had this on uh, before the paint, after the paint. I did not feel the air coming out anymore. So I think uh, paint could be valid. But we have a brand spanking new Fundus camera over there in the corner uh, that we can get cool close-up video of. We're, I'm still kind of in the process of uh, filming that, but there'll be a video on the inside of it. It's pretty cool insides. Uh, it's an old Japanese Koba fundus camera that was made to take a picture of the back of your eyeball. So if you're interested in that sort of a thing, uh, we're going to look at a bunch of things close up. Uh, future videos will feature that as well, so subscribe if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, I beg you, subscribe! You love it! Anywho. Um, what I would like to do is quick to put this under the fundus and kind of see where some of these threads are way off and see if the paint feel, filled in the gaps. So let's go over there. Alright, so this is one of the portions where uh, I thought it might have been leaking. Yeah. 
All right, I got to switch over to super tight. All right, well, it certainly appears like the paint pooled in those areas. Like, I think those bubbles we're seeing on the screen uh, is where the paint was thick and some air got trapped in it and it created a small bubble in between the layers. But it does look like it filled in between the layers rather well right there. This is what we were looking at. Let me get that to focus. Oh, guys. All right, that seemed reasonably conclusive um, en enough for me to not necessarily sand and bond the thing but just you know two, th two three coats of primer would probably do it another concern with this is this mask um, and specifically some of the people that have used these full face masks have died drowned of because they passed out due to hypoxia now hypoxia is when co2 level uh, increases too much so if you will this is its own kind of ecosystem uh, and there's also potential for stagnant air to accumulate here in this space here now this particular mask has a, a feature on it when you connect um, this right here that it has a check valve on the exhale portion of it and it has separated the exhale portion of uh, uh, of your breath from the intake portion. My my adapter design does not take that into account. There are no, um, you can see here real quick, there are three chambers. The two outer chambers are where your air, uh, the your breath is exhausted, so higher, higher CO2 concentration. Uh, intake air comes in through the center portion. My design uh, just uses all three chambers to breathe in. So typically, uh, how this should function as a, a snorkel mask is, air will come in through the center chamber, fill this cavity here, uh, come in through these one-way check valves, either side here, into your lungs, and then exhale out. Uh, there's a valve here that air can go out, and it can also travel along, you can see this is flexible, uh, so there's a channel that goes up, around, and out either side. So you both exhale here and here. So when when I uh, when I designed this, I thought perhaps uh, that would be an issue. But I did some quick calculations. Uh, mind you, it, I did those calculations a while ago. But I wanted to see uh, back then if I could use a length of CPAP hose to create a filter unit that was on your belt and then came up to here on an adapter. Uh, but essentially, point being is, if you're a typical person and you breathe in nah, three quarters of the way in, three quarters of the way out, uh, you will exhale the entire volume of this face mask, no problem. Uh, that should not be a concern. Uh, so with that in mind, I placed this mask on my person and uh, then uh, proceeded to do some work for about an hour uh, sitting at my desk. I did not exert myself necessarily, uh, but I was just breathing. Well, I mean, heck, really, if you exert yourself, you're breathing in larger amounts of air and breathing out the same amount of air. I was breathing fairly shallow, which would be counterproductive, uh, you know, to in terms of like not dying from uh, epoxia. Um, so at any rate, I, I did that. Uh, was able to think just fine, was able to act just fine. Now, when I went, I tried to use this to mow my lawn. Uh, that was a mistake. I made it about two minutes push mowing my lawn uh, as I pushed it up the hill through the thick grass. I was starting to get dizzy and I was really struggling. Like, you know, it was like, like a fish out of water. Just your mouth open, like full on. <gasps> and it's just like the air wasn't coming in. It, it, it kind of reminded me of when I was skydiving that one time and I went to scream and like, and it, it's like the air wasn't moving the way it should past my lips. Like it was like, I don't know, it was just a strange feeling. Uh, so it was kind of like that. Uh, so this was what I was using at the time and this was not adequate for me struggling uh, to push mo. So when I exerted myself, this was no bueno. But for just standing and grinding away on a knife or sanding or what have you, something non, um, non-exerting, you know, trivial stuff. 
this should be fine. I, I walked through Menards with this just fine, uh, no worries. Didn't feel out of breath or anything like that. So even just uh, you know casual walking is fine. Uh, and I, I think I was more on a mission at that time, trying to get in and out before the store closed. Uh, but I was in Wisconsin and they required you to wear masks and it just so happened I had this in the car and so I didn't want to pay a dollar for their mask. Screw you. Anyway, moving on. So I did wear this in Menards uh, in Wisconsin and I also wore it um, to a hospital. Uh, I had to pick up uh, some medical equipment for my mother and uh, I wore this to go see the doctor and to talk to her. Uh, and they, they thought they got a kick out of it. They really did. They were like, oh, you're going to make a mint on this. I was like, no, 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 no. If people want to use it, that's fine. I am not selling anything, you know, use at your own peril kind of a thing. But anyway, um, so that, that's, uh, th those were the two concerns, uh, major concerns that were brought up. One was layers uh, needing to be sealed off. Totally valid. Good, good point out there. Uh, the second was uh, hypoxia from these masks. Hey, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, I, I encourage you to like and subscribe. Um, sma what is it? Smash the like button? I mean, let me just click it gently. Because you get you get more with honey, right? Uh, and not that sponsor thingy, right? Oh, man, that would be a great segue. Uh, feel free to use that. Anyway, <laughs> if, you like, if you've liked anything I've done here, I, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe if you would not mind. Hey, leave a comment. Let me know what I'm doing right, doing wrong. Uh... I do read all the comments because I don't have a hundred thousand comments a day. Uh, <laughs> I get one or two, so uh, I will reply to them if uh, if I think it's uh, if it hasn't already been brought up in the co other comments or if it's uh, a valid concern. Um, which kind of makes it seem like if I don't reply to your comment, I don't think it's a valid concern. Man, this is tricky stuff. I have uh, I got a video on the Fundus camera coming up. I have uh, I have a project uh, for a kayak holder uh, for the top of my XUV, uh, just because I don't believe they make a um, a traditional roof bar for the XUV because of the sliding roof. But you, you'll see. Subscribe and you'll see that. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool setup. Uh, some welding, a uh, little bit of machining, and uh, a little bit of fiddling around. Hey, and we got to use the 3D scanner, right? We're building a gate for the backyard, review videos. I got it quite a bit lined up. So if you like it, stick around. We'll see what happens. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you found some value in this.